Welcome, everybody, to Season 4 of the Quake Pro League. I'm 40 Lines, joined by ZSX. You can't get rid of us. Dan, how have you been? It's been a long offseason. Yeah, I've, uh, I've forgotten what I'm doing here, how to talk. But now I'm excited to be back. We've got uh, some new players in this League 40, which I know you're going to run us through. It's been too long, if I say so myself, but i really excited. Back for Week 1. Yeah, it should be a great kickoff, as you mentioned. We do have some new faces. We have some returning faces. We can actually take a look at the roster that we have in store for this season. Namely, the two I want to point out, Serious and Strong Sage, brand new to the league. And then the return of Tox, Hron, Sib. I mean, this is a pretty stacked roster, Dan. How do you feel about it? Look at all those beautiful plush faces. Um... So many crossed arms. So uh, esports. I know, right now. actually, Strong Sage is triggering me. He's like the only one that's doing the opposite. But no, I think, <laughs> as you said, we got some new faces, some old faces. Um, and it's going to be really exciting. I think everyone's looking out today about how is everyone going to play, what the standard is like. We've got a slightly different map pool mixing it up. But all eyes on Sirius, Strong Sage, Tox, and Sib, the newcomers, once again. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, Strong Sage is not going to make his debut this week. You'll have to wait, chat. But, Dan, while we're on this screen, mm. best biceps, real quick. I mean, I know that you're interested. Mm. What's it's your good, vote? It's a good question. I'm just kind of, uh, I mean, Zanaku's Zana, up there. Zanaku, Max, to Avec. There you go. Top right. three. There you go. That was quick. I like that. Most jacked. Already season one, we got the awards rolling. But yeah, I mean, it's going to be a similar format to previous seasons. If you haven't been around, it's going to be best of three weekly. We play all three maps. Winner gets some money. Loser actually walks away with some cash as well. And everybody is fighting for seeding whenever we get to the finals, which is quite a ways away. But the map pool is actually going to be Awoken, Blood Covenant, Corrupted, Keep, Deep Embrace, Molten Falls, Runes of Starnath, and Veil of Penith. Uh, as some say, so to speak. And, uh, you know, mid-season, there might be a shakeup. It might heat up a little bit. We'll see. But, yeah, that's going to be our roster for this season, season four of Quake Pro League. Of course, the reigning champion, Kilson, top left. Shouts to him. We're actually going to see a bit of a run back today. If we want to hop over to the schedule real quick, see what we have in store exactly today, we can take a quick peek, Dan, because there's going to be a lot of action. Starting off with Kron versus Sib, then we jump into Avek versus Zeniku, Dramas versus Sirius, Toxic versus Nosfa, and the two headlining matches, Venger versus Chain, Kilson versus Razy, the grand final run back. And of course, we'll have DJ Weed there for those last two. Exactly, getting the big hitters out of the way early in Kilson versus Razy. I'm sure everyone is excited for that. But as we said at the start, I think a lot of eyes are going to be on that mid-tier matches in the middle there. Sirius versus Dramis, I'm really looking forward to. That's going to go blow for blow. We know how quick and fast Dramis wants to play. But I'm sure a lot of people have eyes on how Sirius is going to perform throughout this Quake Pro League. His first debut season in the Pro League. Yes, he's been at the top level before, but not in this format. So that's going to be really interesting to see how his season unfolds. And obviously, fan favorite Toxic there at 7 p.m. CET coming up against Nosfa. Lots of people looking out for that. But, you know, we're back in the Pro League. We have to take it week by week. Every match really does count, as you say, as it really does decide the seeding for those finals. And it makes a big difference, as we saw in the in the quick finals last time so we've got to take it week by week but some really exciting matches but before we get down to the later stages 40 we're going to be starting with ron versus sip absolutely first match of the day it's going to be a good one both players have been in the league before they battled their way back again for at least another season and uh what better way to start it off than battling each other Hron, veteran fps player veteran quake player sib he's always been kind of the guardian of uh, na quake in terms of the challengers getting in and out knocking people out and just getting back in this uh, last Quake World Championship. So in terms of these players, I mean, experience-wise, you kind of have to hand it to Hron. I think he has more experience, but Sib has proven time and time again he could throw a wrench in the works for any player he faces. He can, but we've seen it before. He's got a lot of the capabilities. It's definitely the mental side of his game that often lets him down, and he's going up against one of the players who, in my opinion, as you mentioned, is probably one of the more cerebral players and, and really does adapt extremely well and always goes into these events and tournaments maybe as an underdog, but comes out surprising everybody, as he did at the QuakeCon Finals. And I do really think that this is a season for him where he can take it a step up, and we've seen it before with the likes of Maxter who come in as, as underdogs, but have established themselves really as top contenders. And definitely Kron is somebody that has all of the ingredients, in my opinion, to take it 
that step further. So it's a nice matchup for him to start with. Um, Sib obviously coming in with the challenges as well. And one would expect should be a fairly comfortable victory for Juan, in my opinion. But we also have to see what Sib's got. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We didn't even ask for predictions yet, Dan. Let's take a look at the pick bands, see if that changes your tune a little bit here as we can paint the picture better. It's going to be it ruins. <laughs> Newsflash, I don't change my mind. All right, you heard it from the muscle man himself. Ruins of Sarnath, Molten Falls, Veil of Noth. You want to run through the champ stand just like old times, buddy? I do indeed. We have the Strog versus the Anarchy on Ruins, and we know both of these players can be quite adaptive with their champion picks, and I do like the pickup of Anarchy there. I think one would expect that it is one of top tier picks pretty much across the board, but particularly on a map like Ruins. However, the... Uh, the rebuttal of the Strog is really nice just because, again, the mobility does match up and you can play a nice quick game. The burst damage for the Pika is particularly useful against the Anarchy with that inject, so a nice matchup there. Molten Falls is definitely the one to watch out for. Love that map back in this particular pool. We've seen so many iconic games on that map, and we have a blast to start with with the Nyx versus the Scale Bearer. Obviously, a bit of discrepancy in terms of stack, but you have seen in the past how effective Nyxes can be, particularly on a map like Molten. And it could just be the case, and this is a playstyle from has done in the past, where a 1-0 lead is more than enough, and you have absolutely the mobility uh, and utility to work around that scale bearer. So that's going to be an interesting dynamic on that second map. And then we do end up on the Vale of Pinath, which is going to be the Death Knight against the Galena. We've seen hit and miss games throughout last stage with that Death Knight. It has been incredibly impactful, but also completely useless. And obviously a large part of that comes down to how well Zip can play around that Flame Strike. But at the same time, the Galena really is powerful if used right. And again, this is Chrom we're talking about here. He's one of the first innovators with the totem strategy. He will be playing around that overstack extremely well and can play very, very passive. So it might make Sib's life quite frustrating. And if you are charging in then to a setup Galena in her territory, it can be a little bit messy. So it's definitely not as good one-sided as it might be. The first two maps, in my opinion, are definitely going to decide it. If if, if Fron can get away with a victory in Ruins with that Strog and then take the victory on that Nyx, I can see it being a 3-0 sweep. 3-0 sweep indeed from Dan. I, I kind of uh, go along with that. I want to say it'll probably be 2-1. I could see Sib taking maybe Vale on the end there just by pure aggression, but we'll see. That's the beauty of Quake Pro League. Every map has its surprises. And it all starts on Ruins, Strog versus Anarchy, as you said. And again, shouts to Fron. You still have to make the respect ban on Clutch against Sib. You just have to. Like, you, why risk it, right? Why risk it? So we'll see. Strog versus uh, Anarchy coming up here shortly. And uh, yeah, in terms of play style on this, depending on the spawn, what do you kind of want to see out of both of these players, given the champs they picked? I like going out with a bit of aggression to start with, like, like the territory, take your mark. It really, obviously, it really depends. You can be trapped out of this map quite quickly if you get that heavy armor spawn, you don't get the right weaponry, if you get caught even before you get that lightning gun, you're in a lot of trouble. So you have to play it a little bit careful. And we can see that trade for trade play style where you're quite happy to split the items. But at the same time, if you do get that full control with both of these champions and the pressure you can put on, it becomes very difficult, particularly on the back foot as an anarchy. If you don't have a stack, obviously, very vulnerable. So I I definitely think I would like both of these players to try and push their advantage and it doesn't turn into that turtle game. We'll have to see. It might be a little bit trepidatious to start. You know, first week of the Great Pro League, it's back in official competition. Yes, they've been training, but this situation, it really rattles people. So let's see how they can settle into this new season. Yeah, interested to see what form each player has been in. I mean, we've seen varying streams pop up, Kels and Rafa, the usuals, but I don't think I've really seen Kron or Sib necessarily stream a lot of practice. So interested to see how this goes. It all starts on Runes of Sarnath, as you mentioned. And uh, real quick with that Anarchy play, you think if Sib can dictate the pace, he should play around the heavy more than the mega, given the inject, or how yeah, would no, you... I I would say, yeah, that's always going to be the smarter play, but at the same time, you don't want to be giving up the Mega, at least having yeah. that contest is going to be absolutely critical. Taking it is a benefit. Sure, sure. You can want to take as many items as you can, Dan, but we'll see. That's the beauty of battle in Quake, and we are going to jump into our first map, kicking off Season 4 of the Quake Pro League between these two. Live right now, Hron versus Sip. Straight into it, and that situation I talked about nearly happened, but... 
Sib does work his way around to that high ground with that rail not connecting now. And we are on to begin anyway. A USA server. Your favorite. I can tell by the way that you said it here. Scron looking for a little bit of a rail here. And they're going to meet down at the heavy, and it could be doomsday for Sib here. Good nail gun, actually, to keep Kron at bay. There's the rocket jump, wants to secure the mega. It gets there just in time. Sid, if you would have landed that rail, oh, just getting out. Kron in a bad way right now. He is indeed. Um, Sib is Ooh. connecting now, does get knocked down, so very good clutch rail by Kron there. But living on the edge, you can see he's got 10 HP here. Another rail st sticking around. Has the peeker, but what utility is that if he can't get away and keep safe? So good pressure by Sib. He's got both items coming up now. Actually leaves up that Megachron. Standing on the upground does hear that. But I don't know if he exactly knows the timing of the Mega, but no, he does know it. He knows it's safe as well. And you can see the delay from Sib waiting for that sound all the way down below and is putting a nice split on these items. So he is following the guidance that we said, 40, in that he is trying to lay the smack down on this control. Trying his best, had him within 10 HP of the first frag, and somehow Kron survives and uh, lives for the time being. But yeah, interesting delay there. Nice little rocket as well. So this should mean that Sid should be able to get these two items, or at least make it a complete pain for Kron to try and contest. As the Mega is free and Kron a little bit early on this heavy. Sib, great opening railer, but he needs a little bit more. Now he's going to fly in with Anarchy nice. 2 rockets, but not enough. Sib is able to take control and take the first frag of the map and season four of the Quake Party. But lovely LG from Kron. He doesn't actually go through the TP. Could have gotten a the frag there, but decides against it, playing the longer game. But you can see Sib taking the lead there off the back of that very good control play. Kron, a little bit rusty there, without knowing the timing, just standing around and took the fight. Had absolutely no idea. Should have backed off. He does keep himself in the game. Lovely flick rail from down Ooh. below, but Sib with the follow up. Looking clean at the start of map 140. Not bad at all. Two zeros where you want to be, and it looks like he might be laying on some more hurt as Kron just cannot grab some majors here. Using the tribal to the best of his ability to get at least some damage. Only really has rockets to work with. Might drop down for rail, and indeed he does. But at the cost of having to miss another cycle of the mega. He does indeed, and as you're actually right, he is getting no items whatsoever. Hasn't a single heavy so far to date in this map, and... Instead, just decides to retreat and not give away any further frags. Trying to get that timing now. You can see, whilst he's taking it, Ron's actually sitting up above to get that timing. Playing slow, playing passive, wants to defend these choke points. And that's exactly what you want to do against an Anarchy. Sip, on the other hand, goes around the longer way. Realizing that there is something afoot. So smart play by Sib to keep a slower tempo here. Respecting the offensive play from Ron. Ooh, almost hitting that rail, but you're absolutely right. Nice defensive play, measured. Something that is a little bit difficult to do. Good LG, but here comes the peeker play. Sib tries to get a rail around the corner, but can't do it. Kron, almost another rocket to follow up. Hits the rail instead, and now he walks and forces out the inject. But what happens now, Cordy, is that there's... Yeah, exactly. Big good damage, but also Kron has timing of both these major items. He's done enough damage to feel confident to pressure Sib here. Sib does a good job of going around the side, but double rocket. He does bounce onto the Mega. Great flick rail from Kron, but he has enough stack here with this follow-up of the light to actually pressure onto this Mega. He also knows the Inject's been used, so Sib's going to try desperately to defend this. He's living very much on the edge and can't oh. hit the exit rail, so Kron has bullied his way back into this map. Not bad at all. One rocket left. Needs to replenish that and health as well. But a great start to a potential frag for Kron, trying to put his first of the season on the board against Sib here on Ruins. We heard the he heard that health pickups. So he knows where Sib is hiding, and he knows he has plenty of time to work his angles. He might just wait for one more rotation of these items before he goes full on aggressive because he understands that Sib is playing pl this pluck back game. And without any lights to work with as well, Ron realizes that's going to be the point of contest that so he sets up here for this light. But it is spotted down below. So now the tempo should rise. He has the Mega coming up in fives. Sib will not contest this. And now Fon's going to have to work his way in. I like taking the space, not yeah. grabbing the item immediately. I like this play for Fon a lot. And that's kind of Ooh, the experience nice. that we talked about, right? Knowing that this item is safe. Let me pressure a little bit. Maybe mess up the timing. Here's the LG. This has to be a frag for Fon. And there it is. 
The really bad thing, in my opinion, there is the use of the inject. A little bit of a panic inject. He didn't do enough damage to make it worthwhile because now Kron has a huge split on his major items. And as you just rightly pointed out, he can work around that. If you need to pick them up item after item, he can use the item to create space, to create these angles, and absolutely just isolate Sip off of this map. And this is something we've seen in the past from Sip, is that his control game is good, but he has generally struggled out of control. So this is a big moment in the game, and that's some decent damage, but it's just before the next round of items. Just missing out on that rail. Hron's gonna grab another heavy. He's tied it up so far. Looking stronger and stronger. Great rail again, and he has so much stack, he could just sit here. He could even pop the peeker if he wanted another rail. Is he gonna try and close this one out? There's the jump over, a little bit of LG, nice. and Sid cannot escape, and more so, didn't land any damage in that oh. battle, Dan. And this is where Annie become, becomes so hard. Once again, the inject was used for naught, and he's got no items. Don't even really know if he has the timing. He's gonna go flying through to this heavy, but he's early, and he's spotted, and he's hit twice, buddy. What do you do now in Sip's corner? You just panic. I think you just push and die, respawn and pray, because at this point, choking out more time on a map like this with the speed of Kron, he could just play defensive if he wants to, even with the uh, one frag lead, let alone two. I don't know. on the hunt right now. I disagree Not there, because... Well, we can fight about it later, because there's a fight right now. LG Sib trying to back away. There's the inject, but the shotgun blast is going to chunk him down. And now it's just a matter of time. Yeah. No escape. Buckshot to the booty. Four to two for Kron. If he knows the timing, he's won himself a heavy here, and it looks like he does know this. He's going down below, but... Oh no, he's caught once again as Ron does drop down. Ballsy by Ron takes a lot of damage there. He himself goes up, and he'll get both major items. Really nice play by Ron. Sib is gonna push them down here. They're gonna meet once again. Great route from Sib, and he takes the heavy. Big LG to come out, and Ron is down. Oh, he broke his ankles there, 40, but... Sib is still one frag down. Lovely rail from above, Ron. Does retaliate though with a good return. Sib is low, but has that issue. Oh, great rocket on that cross. It was perfect timing. Kron really wanted to get more damage before this mega, but he's going to have to give it up clean to Sib, and that's exactly what Sib needs. 230 left on the board. Plastic around, doesn't have any weapons, he has to retreat. So Sib has won himself full map control. They popped the inject to get it, but it was entirely worth it. The peeker play here he needs to be careful so they're able to take it down. Almost takes another rail. Ron's just trying to delay here. He's trying to do enough damage to win himself this mega. And it looks like he will succeed in doing so. Sib will contest and he actually gets it in time. So really nice play for Sib. He's going to keep pushing here. Lovely rail from above. One more second. Ron doesn't know the timing. He takes it, but he dies for his sins. Just missing on that opening rail is Sib. Less than two minutes. Tied it at four. Very back and forth here, Dan. Trying to cut off, and there it is, but when he has the rail out, doesn't really pay too badly, luckily for him, as Kron just really wants to pick up, and the rocket jump doesn't work out. A little bit too early. Mega goes to Sib again, and now you're facing a deficit if you're Kron. What do you do, Dan? You have to get the weapons. There's only one frag in it. You can't really afford to take any sort of commitments here, and Sib knows he's got the advantage. He's pushing on him. Easy frag to take a two-frag lead, and now it looks really hard for the Ukrainian. What a rail there. The fadeaway rail going through the telly. One minute left, and Sib might start taking that victory lap and forcing the chase out of Franz. Yeah, exactly that. He doesn't need to extend his duty, just needs to go. Okay, away. he wants more. It doesn't matter what we think. Sib is here to make his mark on map number one. Starting off the season with a bang, seven to four, all the pressure on Kron right now, and he has no items, no weapons to work with. He's gonna grab a light, but he still needs weapons, Dan. He does, what do you do here? Sib could just hold his ground, defend that choke point, and there is not much Kron can do. And yep, the GG's come out. Sib knows he's gonna win that first half of this series. You can see how much it means to him. So that's a huge victory. He's under a lot of pressure for a big part of that mid game. And I was talking about how he struggled out of control. Yes, there was a little bit of a mistake for Hron, but as soon as that mistake was made, Sib was able to capitalize and work his way to victory. So really nice play in context from Sib. It was definitely a close and hard shot game, but definitely good about that one. Yeah, very, very fantastic display from Sib there, especially, as you said, playing out of control, keeping it cool, calm, and collected, and able to bring that back 
first map victory goes to Sib. We're going to hop over to Molten Falls shortly where we're going to see Nyx versus Scale. In terms of that lineup, those champ picks, who do you think has the advantage, Dan? It's tough. Like, it really is tough. If if the Scale Bear obviously gets ahead of Steam and Nyx can't control the tempo of the game, it's challenging. But on a map like Molten, there is so many different angles and choke points and maneuvers where you can get away. So I'm going to lean towards a well-played next. We will see. And for those playing the home version, I believe you mentioned that first server was NA. So it was. whether or not you want to justify that had anything to do with it, go ahead, chat. You can do whatever you like. But Sib will take map number one as we take a look at these highlights. And yeah, a bit back and forth. But as you said, the mid play of that duel and Sib able to stay calm and collected was really what set it apart, being able to bring it back and then just take full control. Exactly. And so part of his game he will have to evolve, which is the defense. Definitely a huge weakness in his arsenal. It's, you know, it's always hard no matter who you are, but I definitely notice it more on a player like Sib. Uh, his control game is strong. But there is such a strong deficit on the defense where it can be exploited. And it nearly happened again, but as soon as he got back into the game, yeah, you cannot doubt the strategy and the thought, the way in which he was delaying, delaying items, playing around them effectively. It was a nice, simple game. Let's see if he can keep that up in map number two. Again, Molten Falls here shortly. Kron has the Nyx. Sib will have the scale. And as he said, if you fall behind as a Nyx, it is just so difficult, especially going against a scale in that stack to come back. But those are the stats for map number one there as we take a look at the accuracies and everything. And big shouts to PGL. Look at these graphics, all right? Everyone was complaining about their eyes. They bought QPL sunglasses. And now look at what we got. It's crispy. It's crispy, Dan. I like it. Yeah, back in black. I mean, I, 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 I was uh, I was not a big fan of the white, so I'm thankful we Nobody changed Nobody cares it. about your opinion, Dan. But that's fine, as we have map number two coming up oh, here God. shortly. <laughs> well, I'm just being honest. It's been a while. A lot of aggression to get out. You know, you never call. Uh, the whole off season, I missed you. It's a thing, all right? It's a thing. I'll talk to my therapist about it. But we'll see who talks to their therapist about this. Is technically, Sib can walk away with this first match of the season if he wins this next map. Kron has to battle back. Again, this will be on an EU server. Whether or not you want to justify that means anything, go ahead. I'm just giving you the information. That's all I'm here for, chat. It's going to be Molten. It's going to be Nyx. It's going to be Scale. I think uh, a big spawn... Uh, for Kron might play into this, depending on whether he gets the Mega, the Heavy, or he just gets a bull rush to the face from Sib. Because you gotta know you have the stack advantage. You might, like you said, just play a little aggressive, try and dictate the pace right off the bat. It's definitely a harder map to bully an X on compared to a map like Vale, or, or, or as you will. But at the same time, if you, if you do get that lead, it's still pretty hard to, to knock a Scale Bearer off his perch. And you can also play incredibly well on the defensive for Scale Bearer. You're very quick, you're tanky, you have a good stack, uh, and it's a good map to control both major items. So it can definitely go either way, and the first frag could be deciding. It could be, and we'll see. We've seen 1-0 before. We've seen it before. It might happen again. And also, I mean, it's kind of a lore match, right? Anyone seen that Scale Bearer was crushing the Nyx mask? No? Okay. Just me? Whatever. Play play the game more, chat, all right? That's, just, that's shameful of you. But I think we're loading up, Dan. I think we have map number two here shortly. It's going to be Molten. I hear it. And again, Kron battling for, you know, this first set here. He doesn't want to go out 0-2. Not like that. Not like that. I mean, he definitely looked a little bit rusty there, and you could see the particularly the skill and his thought process towards the game. So we'll see if he warms up into this. I did expect a Kron victory, no disrespect to Sip, but I just think Kron is playing. You know, the last time we saw him, the skill he has, he can definitely be a contender throughout the season. But Sip has shown he is no fool. We are in it now. Kron versus Sip. A little bit of a delay. Nothing too major here. Kron just trying to get some uh, more weaponry. Ooh, just missing out with that rail. Wants a little more there. Maybe sneaky peeky? No. Sid's going to go around the corner, grab items of his own. Yeah, both have the weaponry they need. Sib taking that high ground now. The items are fairly synced, so might be quite happy to trade. You can see Kron chilling, listening out for that sound. Actually hits Sib up above. Double rail, can get a third hit. That's one thing about the scale bearer. You might be big, but you're also a big target. So Kron doing that damage doesn't really make much of an impact apart from just the mental game of saying, hey, I know exactly what you're up to. It also gets a 10 second delay between the two major items. Yeah, nice split here. Ghost walking in for Kron. 
That's a big red to start off. Might get a follow up here with the rocket around the corner. Defensive rockets from Sib, not super powerful, but just enough to send Kron off kilter. And oh, the bull rush, and there's the backup, and somehow. <laughs> All right. There we rocket go. Rocket in your pocket. Scale Bear is back, baby. Kron, close to timing. Sib is down, but he's taking a lot of damage. Kron has the ghost walk if he needs to. He's already hit one round, couldn't hit the follow up, but Sib living with nothing. And take him a little while to get that stack back up and probably can't contest for this next heavy. Doesn't have the bull rush up, doesn't have anything up. And even needs a rail for his troubles. And this is one of the factors which you can play on Molten, obviously, which is just defend the rail. Whether Chrome wants to play that style or is quite happy to go out and keep contesting, which it does look like he is. Sip, knowing the timing of that Mega, will just use this time now to pick up the resources he needs. But you can see the challenge that it is for the Scale Baron. Indeed, as he's trying to hunt his prey right now, playing that middle ground nice and measured, has the one frag lead. I'm still kind of in awe that he didn't pop that Ghost Walk earlier, but it just shows the metal that Kron has. He's, he fears nothing, Dan. As he should, more stack than a Scale Baron at this moment in time. And still with a Ghost Walk, hasn't used it quite yet. And Sip has nothing to work with. Ron just managing that 10 second split to perfection. Sip, biding his time, picking up the lights, got himself a starting stack. We'll just wait around for this heavy. You know, he's got the bull rush up. But there's also an Ole opportunity should Ron needs it. He goes up to the high ground, not exactly knowing where Sib is. It is the right choice. So Sib now just getting the timings he needs to come with the push on out. Oh no, and all that time is pretty much wasted. Ooh, and read perfectly, but didn't really have the rail. Was expecting a little bit more distance uh, to be covered from Sib so he could run into that beam. But still, really nice play from Kron here. Reading it well, still controlling the items. Even though it's a one frag game, you can kind of tell it's Kron's game right now, but Sib hanging on. Yeah, Kron doesn't want to go toe to toe with the Scare Bear. He wants to play the angles, he wants to keep chipping away with the lightning gun, with the rail, and Ooh, just keep control well, of the yeah. item. The worst situation for him is that he gives a big in by letting go of the items and getting caught in the choke point. So you can see Kron taking it carefully. He knows as long as his ghost walks up as well, he's more than confident to take these riskier maneuvers, forcing the spawn down below on the rail. Let's hear it. Goes in. There's the bull rush. But no! What? Wow. Double rail into bull rush. Oh, I eat my words. And still no ghost walk. What? Okay. All right. Kron is angry. Five HP able to grab those 225s. And uh, that was the one where he did go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, Dan. So he's not afraid. He's not afraid, but still up by two, but hurting right now. Kron needs to be very careful. Here comes Sib around the corner. Oh, no. And there's the ghost walk. Takes oh, his real time. Nice. Real nice. Oh, but there's the chase down. Inevitable. 29 HP. Can he get another rail off? And he does. But Sib plants him. Gets a second frag, but decent damage. Yeah, he might try and catch Sib up with the Mega, but he does. Sib's never seen through this huge shotgun. He can't even oh. double jump over the bull rush. And this is the problem. Get the stack up. This is, you can get bullied, and that's exactly what happened. So Fong got a little bit greedy on that respawn. And look at him now. He's connecting with lots of rails. There's one himself a heavy, so that's nice play. This time is Sib getting a little bit greedy. Huge rocket. He can't do anything. So this is a bloodbath 40. Not too shabby. The viewers win. Sib taking so much damage, forces out the Ghost Walk, but he's very weak. There's the Light Armor. Tries to turn around, one more rail, two HP, and the Mega saves his life. Sib somehow survives and almost gets this frag. It's just a matter of time. The Shotgun Blast won't land, three damage. Oh, please, Sib. He's pushing, he wants it another 12, and Kron hanging on by a thread. What the hell just happened, Dan? I mean, they're both just playing incredibly greedy. He bounces though, he's not gonna get this back. What the? <laughs> In the double jump that time coming out from Kron, it works. Unfortunately, Sib could not wear Nyx like a crown that time. We saw it earlier, but Kron gets away with a two frag lead now. But this is very back and forth. As Sib still able to claim the Mega, doing a good job of at least claiming one of the items, but he is on the hunt right now. Heavy will come up shortly here, just peeking around the corner, trying to gain some space grab the weapons he needs, but more than likely, yeah, there's the heavy for free and just missing out on spotting Kron around the corner. I think this is a little bit of a good thing from Kron that he's having to build his stack back up because it was getting 
too chaotic. So now it gives an opportunity to breathe. Yes, look at the stack of the scale bear, but Juan's going to have to play the angles. He's going to have to play slightly smarter game than he was doing. That was almost lending itself into Sib's advantage. So it's a nice thing. Here you go, playing the angle. Obviously, Sib connecting twice. Great rails from Sib. And Ron has to pop the ghost wall. That's definitely not ideal, though. What I really like about that is two rails, yes, but then the swap to machine gun to try and make sure that you nice. get that frag. Now, he didn't, but still, I really like the chase. And oh, no, the rockets defensively from Kron are immaculate here. Both players down to 50 HP. Sib will bully him off the Mega, but that was very, very close. And that's kind of what Kron needs to do is just chip away as best he can. Yeah. There's a great rail as well, unreturned, down to 84 HP. Sib should be careful here. This is not for free. It takes a lot of LG jumping over. 125 to try and stack back up a little bit. There's the heavy, but he might go down here, Dan. All right, Sib's taking so Ooh. much damage. He... Every time he does return, though, it's a massive blow to the advantage of Ron. So those are critical rails. And Hrip, um, Sib's actually been really good at using that super shotgun to his advantage in close range quarters. So that's been a good weapon for him so far. But he does also need to be careful when he's exiting these pickups. That's when Hrip's, uh, that's what Ron's doing all of the damage. Sib is doing just careless in around those moments. And they are critical times in the match. If Sib can actually fix that, he can still force his way back into this game. And we're at that point in the game, time-wise, 40, where Ron's in two minds about how much does he commit. He's going to have to Ghost Walk away from this, which he does. He sneaks on round. He knows the Mega's coming up. He actually gets back into the choke point. And once again, Sib gets greedy. He knows the Ghost Walk's up. So that's slightly questionable. The read was there, but he second-guessed his read as he backed into Kron. And Kron just using that double jump perfectly off the wall. Wow. And this has got to be frustrating for Sib. Two minutes, four frags, and Kron is just... He's playing well defensively. He doesn't necessarily have more items. He doesn't have the best stack, but he just kind of knows how Sib wants to just rush down, try yeah. and get the frag, and he's just counterplaying that very well. It's definitely a, bit, a mix of both. Like, Kron is playing great on the defense. Uh, he's pushing it to the limit as well, but Sib's... Sips being, on the one hand, slightly careless, but he's also executing really well. Sips hit so many clutch rails to keep himself into this game, but you can see how desperate he is. I mean, at this point in the game, he just has to plus forward, but still. Ron is hitting the shots he needs to hit, and that's been absolutely pivotal. The angles he's playing are really smart, and Sips just found it impossible to get any clean angles. There you Ooh. go, a double rail from Sip. There's still time. Slim, but there is still time. Just a tickle of LG there. Just missing out on the rail. And the hunt is on, Dan. Minute 10. Can Sib He's lay the, the trap? Yeah. One oh, he doesn't have a rail now. Don't stick around there, my friend. Just back one up. There you go. Catch him in. Sib once again hits another rail. Every time he needs to hit one, he does. And that's kept him in this game. With a minute to go, two frags in it. This is possible. He's got time for another pickup, but decides against it. Goes on round. He might give up this, but no, Soron doesn't know either. Just tries to jump away. Tries to engage in a rail fight. He knows that the, the bull rush isn't up, so he has time to scuttle himself away, and every second counts him. Just missing out on the rail, and Sid really needs one of those clutch rails again. Let's switch to the rocket. The nice. LG GG. so strong down those stairs. Yeah, literally nothing that he could do there. It was always going to be in his favor. He's trying to manifest situations like that, and Sib. He just has to commit. He knows if he doesn't, Sib uh, will get away, and that's, that will definitely be a GG. So, really impressive game, Rakon, on the defense. We'll say that there was definitely times in the mid game where Sib was almost trying too hard to force the issue. And he did hit some incredible shots to boot, but it was just a step too far playing against the Knicks on the defense. Big shouts to Kron for map number two, taking that, tying it up, and sending us to map number three as the decider. First game into season four, you gotta love it. And shouts to Kron and his wall jumps. Very clutch. Really the only way to counterplay a scale when you're kind of out in the open, just back up towards the wall and jump over him. We saw a couple times it didn't work, but if you hit it perfectly, it's chef's kiss. It is just a thing of beauty, Dan. It was. It was, uh, it was BS, but I'll, I'll give it that. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Did Tom take no damage on that? Was it just uh, he hit? Well, Nyx has a passive where she's a strong, independent woman, so it doesn't need to take anything <laughs> from anybody. So I don't know if that was popped there. But regardless, I mean, these are the highlights. Fantastic play from both players. And again, as Sib, you know, sometimes he gets a bad rap about like you know 
with Quake Pro League yeah. and maybe not being as good as the other players, but right now he's going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Thrawn, sending us to map number three, which is going to be Vale. And as you mentioned before, we're going to see Galena versus DK. And you're a little skeptical about the DK pick. I'm not skeptical. I'm just saying it comes down <laughs> You just to don't me. like it. I mean, I don't, don't not like it. I'm just saying it comes down okay. to... I'm saying it comes down to execution. We've just seen it being absolutely friggin' useless, but we've also seen it be used to great effect. So, you know, I can't say either way what it's going to bring, but we also know we've seen when Chrome wants to play defensively, he can do it, and now he has another champion that can play very well on the defense. You could just set up down by the rail area if you want to, even by the around by the, uh, the heavy, build up your overstack, Bob's your uncle. Uh, and we know Kron is, is quite happy to play that type of play style. He's also very creative with the way he used totems. And Galena, when played well on, on that play, Bell, is a, is, she's a very tough ask. So if Sib can then ensure he clears up the totems and use his flame strike effectively, then obviously that's when the Death Knight is extremely powerful. But if you're going to miss your Death Strike, then what are you? What is the point of you? Why, why do you have exactly. so much fire in your belly if you're not going to use it, is what you're saying. So, yeah, I mean, we'll see. It's going to be two tightly uh, knit questions for me, for Hran. Do you have any crazy totem placements that we're, that you're going to show the world right now? And uh, are you going to be able to get that overstack? Is Siv going to be able to read where you're putting them and take care of them appropriately? Or is he going to let it kind of spiral and let you get a free mega? Because, again, as Galena, you get that free mega, you kind of favor the heavy side of the map. And then it, it could go out of control. But as we see there, the stats, rather the score lines for the first two maps as we're going to get ready for the third. The deciding map between these two for the first regular season game of Season 4 in Quake Pro League. And again, it's it's great to see Hron and Sib back battling their way through Challengers last World Championship. And uh, once again, punching their ticket to the Quake Pro League. Good to see some fresh and semi-fresh faces back, you know? And yeah. Then, and then there's you. <laughs> I just, yeah, I just take out flock of seagulls haircut, this beak out here. I don't even know what I'm doing with my life. Look, my whole thing is I just have hair for now, so let me just use it before I go bald, right? That's why I've been waxing my entire body, saving it the hair in bags I think and it, pasting I, it to I, my head. I mean, looking at you, I think you're one of the... Lacking Say, hair is something you should never face. worry about. Let's put oh, it okay. Way. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> is it because of all the selfies I send you post gym? I've <laughs> never been to a gym. Who am I kidding? Uh, but yeah, well, I heard the sound, and that's the sound of map number three loading up shortly. So chat, I hope you're having a great day. Welcome back, Quake Pro League. I don't know if we've been having predictions or not, but it doesn't matter because Dan and I can take care of the, all of that for you. Technically, I still could be right with the 2-1. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, you're going to be right with the 2-1. How is it not? Well, because I said for Hron. Oh, I so, see. I thought, yeah, you just, yeah. I, just, I thought you were just in oh, general. No, no, yeah, sorry. I should have been I thought, more specific. I thought you were just, I thought you were just I thought you were following me. We've been out of sync for a while. It's okay. Yeah, we'll build yeah, it back yeah. up. We'll build it back up. It's fine. Slowly, it's just yeah. poetry in motion. It's a little bit awkward first date type vibes right now. <laughs> it's okay. But map number three, Veil. It's happening right now. Kron versus Sib. Who will win? Who will prevail? We're going to start off on Kron right now with that Galena, and that's going to be a big spawn there as he gets rockets and LG early. Yeah, and we're seeing the mind game start already throughout. The big delay coming out from Fron. I do think a big part of this particular map, as we saw in the last map, is going to come down to the rail. This is definitely a map, once again, you can play significant angle-based game. You know, players like Chain excel at that. And I think that is an area that Fron will also enjoy, but Sib is more than accustomed to. That rail has been an absolutely pivotal feature of this series, and I don't expect this one to descend to such chaos. A little bit more managed. I would love chaos. There's a great vertical rail there. Kron holding his ground. There's the flame star you talked about. But the totem to cleanse, but still back in the fire again. Kron needs to get out 33 HP and counting. It's not looking good. Is he going to get to the health bubble? And he will. And the flames dissipate. But what a nice. rail from Sam. Nice. What a rail indeed. And a server ping right there. Lovely rebuttal from Kron on the defense. Huge damage coming out. Sip getting greedy going for that light. Predicted by Kron, but the lovely return oh. rail from Sib, and his rails have been on fire. I understand wanting to maximize grabbing everything in the Thunderdome before the heavy, but if Kron just went for the heavy first, he might not be in this predicament. But Sib lands that rail, as you said, looking good, and he's up 2 0 early on the Veil here. Nice. Um, great rail there. Does have a totem in his pocket. Yeah, not the end of the world. Sib no, he had the mega to fall back on. So just testing his luck out there. To try and maximize the damage, but this is a little bit greedy going from down below. Kron reading that once again. 
Flamestrike comes out, the totem's there as well. One second and he falls on down. Ooh, beautiful. Good. Rocket jump across and defend this Mega as well. Drops up at the rail, no rocket damage just yet. And they are both weak. at that mega light combo now. Holding the high ground, dropping to the middle. Waiting for this heavy as Siv grabbing the lower acid armor. Making his way back through the teller on top here. Rocket just missing out, clipping the edge here. Good LG defense from Kron here. Nice rail though. Siv's making him pay. There's oh, the rocket jump lovely. with the flame strike. There's a rail again. Can he get another one? He does! <laughs> oh. oh, the rails have been fundamental so far. Amazing damage from Kron coming out there. Siv. Coming aggressive though off the return here. Big rockets coming out. Bomb didn't expect that. Can line himself up with the rail, but not to be. And Sib understanding the situation of when to push here as he's won himself that mega. Yeah, really nice push there. Hron completely caught off guard. Let's try desperately to slow it down right here, but Sib is making a good job of forcing the tempo onto Kron. He's actually been using the flame strike really effectively and playing it around. He has it up here. He might be using it through the choke point, but gets bounced around wow. and decides against it. Lovely flick around from Kron out the back exit there. Can't finish the job off just wow. yet, but Sib can. Kron just did that. That was beautiful with the rockets and everything, but Sib just quicker with the rail and he's up by three now Fron with a great rail as he drops down hits another one as well needs one more though Sib caught out now there's the tribal well red and just needs to hit nice. it and he does but Sib on the fadeaway it's a little rail of his own but Fron looking a little stronger now trying to make his way to the mega 10 seconds give or take and Sib wants that damage you see him flying around the corner with the rail and it's not gonna work this time no, that was, that was greedy there, and now he's got a bad spawn. He's going to try and go aggressive here, but that was actually too greedy, and now he's in a lot of trouble. From missing, let's see him live to fight another day, but he will sweep up the map here. Sip might try and push on for the heavy. He knows the timing. He does get it, so that's the only fortunate thing from that escapade. Really good combo there. A little bit of rocket to rail. Four on. Gets through the telly, unscathed for the most part, but misses out on a crucial rail. Yeah. Sib able to hit a fadeaway. Is he going to push back before this mega? Does he know the timing, Danny? He's coming through the Thunderdome right now. Fawn no. trying to stand his ground. He knows, he knows he's got the heavy wrapped up if he plays this easy, which he's going to do. He tries to cut off. It was the right choice. Just dropped a little bit early, but Sib realizing he'd done his job with that significant damage. And Fawn desperately trying to put... A stamp of control on this game so far, but the way in which Sib is able to build that stack and has his flame strike, which could bust out here. Once again, Ron is just on that mega for no particular reason so early, but somehow comes out on top. I'm not entirely sure how that mistake turns into his frag. I think it was a case of fancy feet. It looked like he dodged perfectly on the flame strike. Maybe Sib tried to collapse the the flame strike a little bit too early and Kron uh, gets away with one there. I, I like this though. He knows that that heavy has been the saving grace for Sib so far. So Kron here putting a big split on the two major items to make a concerted effort here to do a bit of damage for the heavy and try and wrap it up for himself. He falls into the flame strike though and that hurts because now he's going to have to run, get out of position and be low in oh. the stack and even just killed out the back of it. So I liked the thought process, but this is where we talked about that the Death Knight could just be so incredibly powerful. And that delay's actually, yeah. And also the delay, Sip not aware of it. He's in position really early, four seconds. Ron's there, trying to get a frag. And this is so back and forth now. Sip's <laughs> causing the chaos that he needs to to keep in this game. Both players just landing ridiculous rails there. Sib caught out in a weird situation where the totem was in front of him. He couldn't push, then the rocket pop. Great rail from Kron to tie it up at five. But this whole game, we have not really seen that totem economy go anywhere with uh, Kron. So good on Sib for being able to maintain Ooh, and another great rail. There's a little bit more damage, and Kron needs to be careful. Sib started to chain him together. But at the same time, the map's gone in a way in which it's just been chaos. That Sib, um, so Ron's having to use them to recoup his health or even off the back of a flame strike. So it's been a good use of them as well, either way, to try and nullify the damage of Sib. But now you can feel the momentum swinging significantly towards Ron. If he can get a clean, heavy pickup here and push his way onto the Mega, he's in a real strong position. 
continue to nullify the advances of Sip. Sip knows how much he has to contest his mech. He cannot let that happen. It's exactly why he's here. So good damage from Sip. A lovely rail through that grate. And we are back to this back and forth. Yeah, Alcharon grabbing that line. Oh, okay. How? <laughs> It happens, Dan. That's a fantastic rail. Bending it like Beckham here. Sib has what? such a stack advantage, and there's another one. Oh, will tie us up at six. 64% rail, but for Front, 36 for Sib, but he's hitting the ones he needs, and so much damage with that Flame Strike Rocket combo. What do you do against that when he just appears in your face with a rocket of flame? Oh. Sickening. Two and a half minutes to go. Map like Veil, plenty of time, but that was a clean frag. Pretty much the first properly clean frag we've had all map long. How could Sib now convert that into continuous pressure? Tribolt actually menacing from Sib there. Gone. Trying to post up for a rail. Clean rail. Goes for another one, but uh, eats it. Needs to be careful. Yeah. The shotgun is going to clean him up, and now it's very dire for Kron. You, you can't try and make that aggressive posturing with the rail and miss. It just, it just doesn't work. And I, I get why he tries to do it, but as soon as you miss, it's GG in that instance. And now with, it feels like Sib can see this one out for the 2-1 victory. He doesn't even need to finish off Kron, though. He knows he's got absolutely nothing to work with. Use his time, use his pressure just to take the map away, buy yourself some breathing space. Really nice play by Sib. Just kept that pressure on. No signs of stopping now as he just follows through. Flame yeah, strike GG. for insurance. 10 to 4 rail off the spawn as well. Fron trying to fight back when the machine gun gets planted again. And this one looks like it's going to go to Sib. So 2 to 1 for Sib against Fron. First match of season 4 of the oh. Quake Pro League. And holy, nice vertical rail there. Sib's only got 40% rail, but it feels like any critical clutch rail to hit. He didn't feel like he missed anything when it mattered. He uses it a lot, but whenever he needs to hit, he oh. hits it. Oh. And we watching Razy right now? <laughs> there we go. Really well I, I, I would have put my money on the first gauntlet by Razy in season four, but no. No, we saw it right here. Sib on a train. And really well played. There's definitely chinks in the armor of Sib, and Kwon also looked rusty, but that was solid play start to finish. You can see that really good understanding of when to put that pressure on. And when he has control, it's, it's scary. Good execution throughout, so can't complain. Wow. Still 30 seconds of this, and Sib is like, I'm going to use all of this. Is Sib wearing an Udi? I, I don't know. Bro, that, if that's the most disrespectful thing, not even the gauntlet, competing in an Udi, that's <laughs> another level of esports bullshit. Well, <laughs> all right. Oh, well, well played by Sim. Definitely, oh my god. Definitely didn't expect it to be this one sided for, for the map three, and I think the scoreline is obviously not a fair reflection, but yeah, really well played by Sim. Looking to see, looking forward how both these guys compete in the, uh, the Pro League throughout the season. Yeah, quite the start. Two to one. Sib is able to take it over Kron, get his first victory of the season, and that's the way you want to start. Strong start from Sib. Again, both players, as you said, look pretty good, but mm -hmm. Sib just hitting those rails when he needed to. Percentage doesn't matter, chat. Remember that. Just hit the ones that you need. Unfortunately for Kron, he ran. He ran so far away, but it just wasn't enough to get past the finish line. Yeah. He will go. Oh. I, I think my friend has, yeah, has uh, DC. Most of us wrong, right? Oh, you're back? Oh, what happened? I'm back? I was gone? Yeah, I, I think thought... Yeah. 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 Oh. <laughs> Don't talk to me like that in front of these people, Dan. How dare you? Uh, as All we right. take a look at the series, well, first map uh, recap here. Lots of frags, lots of action, as you said. It got a little hectic there in the middle, Dan. It did, and you could see there was a good period of time where Chrome was desperate to try and put control on the game and really focusing on splitting the items, trying to build that stack up. But any time Sib sensed that, this is what happened. That did frag right there. He just pushed on in. He waited for that flame strike. He pushed on in when Kron was out of control. The good and bad thing about Kron's playstyle is he plays these aggressive angles with the rail. But it, if he misses them, or even if he hits them when Sib's charging on him with a full stack, it doesn't even matter because Sib just takes the brunt of that rail 
follows up with the flame strike into Rocket and was able to close the gap. And that was absolutely nullifying to the way in which Ron wanted to play this game. So Sib had that play on the Death Knight. And as I said, the Death Knight can be incredibly powerful if you can use him in the right way. And that's exactly what Sib did. So really well played. We are now, yeah. Okay, cool, yeah, Foddy is officially out. I wonder what was going on. Anyway, I can't uh, you know, say any really anything else. I think that Sib had a really strong game. I did expect the Chrome victory, and it was close throughout. Obviously, that final map is not a fair reflection of the scoreline, but either way, it was a really nice, well-played by game by Sib. Definitely passionate. He saw a, saw a lot of emotion coming out towards the end. Definitely excited to see where this goes because the QPR means a lot to him. But it's really, really nice to see Chrome back in this setting. One of my uh, more favored players in terms of the way he likes to play the game. And I think we'll see him grow into the QPL this season. So hold a lot of high hopes for him. But either way, really good game. And we will be jumping over to a break. Yep, we'll jump over to a break and we'll catch you for the next series.